Look at all that money, yeah, the money that they spent. Take another look now and take some time for him. I know cut trees for paper, cause it hurts the environment. Stop deforestation, yeah, it's time for him. Oh, an acre of hemp makes 20 barrels of oil. To poison all our soil People got no food They got no clothes They got no rent Well, it's time for him Good golly, Miss Molly It is time for hemp It's a rock and roll day in paradise Everybody's gonna have to bounce around today We'd want you to bop out of your bed, take that pillow and hit yourself in the head and tell you that you are alive. This is your life. Show up and be part of it. Don't just sit around in a daze and stare at the wall and wonder what's happening to the world around you. Get out that door and become part of the solution. Get active in helping the world be a better place. Give love to patients who are sick. Write letters to people stuck behind bars. Help animals that are facing euthanasia. If nothing else, just smile and be nice to your neighbors and let them know how important it is to end prohibition in your neck of the woods. Jeepers! It is time for hemp. And uh, anytime you hear the word joint on the big broadcast, don't forget nearly 2.5 million people all around the world hit their bongs, their pipes, their vaporizers, and of course, do take time for hemp. And it is Tuesday. On Tuesday, we like to put a big salute to all the hardworking activists up in Canada. I tell you, uh, to me, they've always been leaders up there. They've got a beautiful hemp industry. They've been creating hemp foods and hemp cosmetics for a very long time. Their government even helps to advertise their hemp products worldwide, and yet the ass clowns in charge don't know a, a, a thing about medical marijuana, which is why it's so important that we always pay tribute to them on Tuesdays. So we can bring on my joint host, Kelly Kristen, to the big broadcast and have as joint guest people from Canada and Nova Scotia to let us know what's going on up there in their neck of the woods and how they are turning things around. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Casper. How are you doing today? I'm wound up on coffee. Does it show? <laughs> coffee? You don't drink that stuff, do you? Coffee and okay. reefer. Oh, yeah. Coffee and reefer is what I like, baby. <laughs> Goodness gracious, yes. So what is going on up in Canada? I'm sure that you're just about ready to have a big, warm, fuzzy hug with all your uh, police agents up there. and They're surrendering to the war on drugs and that your government has realized the fallacy of their ways, correct? Yeah, yeah, we're still trying. We're, uh, <laughs> we do have a federal election coming up next year. Yahoo! Yay. Um, I'm getting a big sign for my van. And I'm going to have a big sprinter van, so it's rather huge going down the road. And I'm going to get some big signs for the side. And they're going to say, please vote ABC, anything but conservative. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, 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 I just honestly feel that uh, that's what's going to happen anyhow. Most, uh, except here in Alberta where I live, everybody still, I'm assuming, has blinders on for the energy industry because the conservatives of course are good for the energy industry they really want to get this pipeline going they can't get it down to you guys in texas they want to get it somewhere here in canada they just want to build a pipeline and pump that oil and uh that's 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 what the conservatives are good for they're very very popular here in the province that i live in so you uh, don't think it's a good idea to dig up thousands of miles of, of beautiful earth and 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 uh, put a pipeline of oil going through it at 100,000 gallons a minute? You think that's a bad thing? <laughs> well, I don't know. Talk to the folks in Michigan. They recently, not too long ago, had a nice spill from a nice Canadian 
company and their pipeline. But look at all the jobs they create. Every time you have an oil spill, you employ about a thousand people per mile. <laughs> <laughs> well, the build-up to it is pretty good. I mean, uh, obviously, it's fairly expensive to build a pipeline, so there's a lot of money to be made in that. And then the landowners that do have the pipelines beautifully running through their property, they do get royalties and, and get get a nice monthly check uh, for letting their oil fl flow through the land. Um, recently, I've seen on television where some Canadian farmers are um, finding uh, trace amounts of, of uh, oil products in their land. And at first, the oil companies tried to say that, well, maybe you changed the oil for your tractors or your tractor was leaking a little, you know, that's tractor leakage. But, of course, it's not. It's been leaking from the pipeline. And, of course, now these people have medical problems and, and uh, you know, now their land obviously doesn't, uh, doesn't have much value. Who wants to? You know, and, and I, I believe there was a time where people wanted or it was a, an asset to have a pipeline running through your property because you were paid royalties, I don't know, on a monthly basis or yearly basis or whatever. But now it's a detriment, of course, because if you've got a pipeline running through your property, you may not want it. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit of a reversal in terms of land value and pipelines running through it. Uh, but the bottom line is, let's face it, they're leaking, and uh, they're causing harm, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's not a great thing, man. What can you do? We need to we need to we need to build more uh, facilities to process the hemp that we're going to start producing like crazy, so we can get away from this stuff called oil. Well, you know, I do not know who came up with that silly idea of putting thousands of miles of pipe underground to poison the land. I mean, somebody had to turn to the idiot and say, you know, I have a hunch that if we do this, we're going to have some oil spills in the end. What they say, well, you know, shit happens. <coughs> well, it doesn't matter how they transport the oil. If they do it in big tankers, we saw what happened with the Val Exxon Valdez, um, and it's, of course, not the only one in the world. Um, yeah, it's uh, however they want to move that stuff is... Uh, Let's face it, they they got to go to great extremes to get this stuff because they've used up all the easy deposits of it already. Um, so we got to go farther and deeper. And, uh, yeah, to bring it to the masses, we need some kind of a method. And, uh, or, well, <laughs> if we want to continue our dependency on oil, we need some kind of method. And there is no good method. I don't care how you transport it. Uh, if you transport it by rail car, uh, we just had a recent, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, tragic thing with a bunch of uh, oil on the train uh, here recently in Canada. And uh, so it doesn't matter. Train, uh, boat, uh, pipeline, um, they're all susceptible, obviously, to leakage, breakage, um, you know, uh, killing the coastline, killing the farmer's land. And, well, in general, killing the planet by what we put in the air after we burn it. So, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful product. And, well, we all use it. And um, we just have to find, we already have, we don't have to find an ulterior, alternative method. We just have to adapt uh, to using it. And that means planting more hemp. Exactly. And, you get 20 uh, barrels of oil or more for every acre of hemp you grow for fuel production yeah i know it's sick man it's sick and then the the uh, uh pellets that we can make that we can stop running you know we don't have to retrofit apparently our our beautiful coal huge coal burning uh, uh electricity generating uh facilities we have in alberta because we also not only have oil but we do have a lot of coal and the vast majority of our electricity is generated by uh is from coal uh, burning uh, the burning of coal and you know we could just instead of using coal use hemp pellets and uh um create a net uh zero environmental plus or minus when we burn it we create a negative and when we grow it we create a positive and it's a net zero balance as opposed to what we 
what we do with oil, which is horrible. Well, we're going to so, have to figure something out because I saw a few days ago that supposedly, you know, and we've heard this before, there's only 56 years left of oil on the planet. <clears throat> well, I, I, I don't know. I don't care, really. I, I just hope that we, I, what I care about is, is using less oil and, and getting away from oil and the thinking that we don't need to be uh, a society uh, that is dependent on oil in any way, shape, or form, or crude oil. Um, hemp oil, yeah, uh, just because it's good for the planet and it's good for us. Um, once we switch to that, man, it's going to be a happy planet and, and happy people. Well, and speaking of happy people, I know a happy person that is our joint guest today. He's been mm. on before, and he's been on uh, a couple other programs on our network and brings a lot to the table when he sits down. David Shea. Good morning, David. Good morning. Well, it's 2.13 here where I am, but hey, what's on the go? <laughs> Hello, David. Nice to meet you. You're not that extra half hour. You're not that far out east, are you? No, that's one more province away, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're up in Nova Scotia, so that means marijuana grows like poppies and dandelions, and everybody moves in love there, right? <laughs> yeah, it does seem like it's a very uh, marijuana province. There, there does seem to be a lot of people here that uh, are into the culture and growing and providing for themselves. And, of course, the political arena, the authorities, and the law enforcement are just happy and they dance around with you. Y'all hold hands and have warm fuzzy hugs at your marijuana marches, right? Yeah, I got to say the police are pretty good too. Like, uh, I know that, you know, obviously there's some people that come into conflict, uh, like Stephen Godfrey. He was uh, a patient who was arrested. He never had his license or whatever, and he was convicted or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> I know he was also sentenced, but I'm not sure what the sentence was. But in general, like... The police don't really seem to bother us a lot here. In terms of if you were pulled over and you were found to be in possession of a small amount of cannabis, they would just maybe confiscate it and let you go? or Yeah, that's the general idea. I, I know uh, I got a friend, uh, Chris, he, that's exactly what happened to him. He was pulled over because, uh, I guess... He was smoking a joint while he was driving, and the police, you know, figured, hey, let's pull this guy over, and uh, he had a bunch of oil on him, and instead of charging him or anything, they just took the oil and set him free. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a switch. <laughs> it is, uh, considering I, I have heard uh, Mark Emery was arrested here a long time ago, so it is a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I know, too, there's a, you know, with the police, we have events all through the year, and, you know, just like in a lot of other provinces, the police will show up, and, you know, generally, they're just there watching us, and there's no problems. Yeah, we have the march here, and um, every year, of course, the police presence has been quite spectacular, considering the amount of people that show up here on a really nice beautiful day if we have good weather we can get a few hundred and uh, uh, the police presence is immense they they film us they uh, they follow us of course uh, they, they do help and the fact that they stop traffic so that we can easily cross the streets in our march um, but last year their presence was non-existent and I attribute that to the fact that after so many years of spending all that money uh, to, I guess, I don't know what their, what their thinking is, we were going to go crazy or whatever in downtown Calgary, um, there was absolutely zero police presence, which showed the respectable, responsible use of cannabis was happening, as it always did, and it's a peaceful uh, protest, and... Uh, um, yeah, amazing. There was absolutely no official police presence at the event. It was uh, was quite a shocker, really. I don't know if they missed the date or, uh, well, no, they, they couldn't have missed the date. We have to apply for a permit and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was really, really uh, went to show the fact of, of how far we've come 
that, uh, of course, they felt a, a massive police presence was necessary at our event. And after uh, a few years have decided they need zero presence. So kudos to all the uh, Canadian uh, um, who attend and, uh, yeah, prove that we uh, were, were, were uh, you know, just your standard everyday law-abiding citizen. Yes. I, I feel like, again, I reflect that here. Last year, I, I believe there was maybe two or three police at a, our July 1st event. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> that was nothing compared to the number of people there. And, you know, I, I'm not saying I, I don't really have much opinions on if young people should be smoking pot or not. But there was a lot of use there. And, again, you know, the police just didn't really seem to have any issues with what was going on. Now, aren't you a medical marijuana user? I am, yes. And uh, you might let our audience know why and how it helps. I have a condition called scleroderma. It's an autoimmune disease. And uh, the way it works is it's sort of like rheumatoid arthritis, which is where your, your immune system attacks, you know, your joints and stuff. But for me, it goes all the way through my body, and it leaves scar tissue everywhere, including my esophagus and uh you know, my lungs are bad, stuff like that. But mostly I had uh, gone from 180 pounds when I was in the Army to about 120 pounds within three or four months. And if it wasn't for marijuana, I probably wouldn't have been here today. Wow. And how did you discover cannabis? Well, <laughs> I discovered cannabis, you know, as most people did when I was a teenager. And, uh grade 12 or whatever, and, uh, you know, I, I had a joint. Or, but, you know, I, I was in the Army for a long time, and, you know, I stayed away from that for blood test reasons and all that kind of thing. And afterwards, you know, I kind of knew, obviously, that it was going to help with appetite, so I tried it out, and it worked. Dad, do you Is have that a all that it did for you was your appetite, or did it help you in any other way? Well, I do find that it uh, helps me with pain relief, too, but that's not really the primary reason I use it. I'd, it's really specifically the appetite. So your appetite was so diminished? Yeah, because of the fibrosis or the scar tissue in my throat, I was having two problems. There's a, a sphincter there, so it wouldn't uh, close all the way, so... Any food that I was eating would kind of just come back up into my mouth, and <clears throat> I didn't actually have an appetite regardless anyway. Like, I could go three or four days without wanting to eat, and then the fact that if I ate something, it would just come back up anyway, uh, it just made it really uncomfortable. So, uh, No doubt. You know. Well, if you, if you can't get anything into you, you're obviously not going to survive very long. Right. And they say you can survive on water for a month, but... Um, you know, even that's probably stretching it, uh, but uh, still, yeah, and no food consumption is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you're not going to survive very long. Um, when you, you know, did it, because it gave your appetite back, did it also stop the food from coming back up, though? It did. I, well, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attribute it to it because, you know, if I give up marijuana for any length of time, then those symptoms come back. Wow. Kind of like the same problem I have if I give up my commercial breaks. The symptoms we have is called bankruptcy. So <laughs> we are going to change gears here and pay our bills. Listen to a song about how fantastic marijuana is. And holy jeepers, we're going to come back and take more time for him. Listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. THCF Medical Clinics are the premier physician's clinic in the United States. 
United States. THCF has offices all across the United States from Hawaii to Michigan. THCF Medical Clinics has helped approximately 150,000 patients obtain their medical marijuana permits to legally possess, grow, and use medical marijuana. If you have chronic pain, multiple sclerosis, or any other neurological degenerative disease, or if you have any gastrointestinal disorder such as GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, or if you have AIDS, cancer, spastic disorders, seizure disorders, or glaucoma, call us at 1-800-723-0188 or visit us online at hemp.org. Again, the number is 1-800-723-0188 and the site is hemp.org. In need of a ganja vacation? Blaze away. Don't criticize it. Hotbox Jamaica. Chill. Relax and burn all day while watching the amazing ocean view. Listen to the birds. Bathe in the mineral waters of the Ganja River. Munch on tasty Jamaican Rasta food. Take a weed farm tour and hold a meditation. Book this amazing vacation for $420. Get the Sativa Special. Seven nights in Sativa dorms with Ganja meals and airport transfer. Check us out at hotboxjamaica.com. That's hotboxjamaica.com. Hotbox Jamaica, a higher meditation vacation. Indigo is your source for affordable induction grow lighting. First discovered in 1891 by Nikola Tesla, Indigo lights deliver 11 years of electronic sunlight to your plants. Indigo lamps require less than half the power of traditional HID lamps. Converting to Indigo lights means you'll cut down on your power bill with less lighting. Indigo lamps also use five times less mercury than traditional fluorescent or HID lamps, making Indigo not only energy efficient but environmentally friendly as well. No more switching out lamps between vegetative and flowering stages. As nature intended, your lights get a steady dose of UV light. That makes your plants grow healthier and stronger. Indigo products are manufactured in San Diego, California and come with a written 10-year warranty. What Tesla knew, then growers know now, is that Indigo lighting is the cost-effective addition to your victory garden. To learn more or order now, go to inda-grow.com. That's inda-gro.com. Or call 877-452-2244 to answer any of your questions. These guys really know lights. Indigo really is your sunlight in a box. Education and information. See what all the buzz is all about. It's time for hemp. It's time for hemp. Amen. Mm. Try some of this. It's absolutely dynamite. Oh, yeah. I got a little story about a boy named Doug. He likes to smoke a lot of reefer. He only does kind of. He smokes that red bug, green bug, just that kind. Gonna start to fly. He likes to start out the mornings with an early buzz. He likes to go about his business, growing big fat buns. Stuck with that tie, but his bum with that gold box, his body's on the end. He's gonna touch. Little dog 
likes a girl Her name's Susie Cues She never tried any reply She's always sent that glue He shows her how to use it. He says, won't be long. She smokes at his forever. Tried that drive by a car, but she's really getting high. She's bouncing off the sky with three little madness. It's three little madness. DC Joe, three little madness. Leaves with sadness. DC Joe. To the story, the only reason for the song. The reaper brings us all together, it only helps to get along. We smoke all kinds of fun, day and night, share the kinds of fun, the sad sun, we're really getting high. We don't believe the lies of reaper madness. It's reaper madness. We're teaching joy, it's reaper madness. And if there's reefer madness in your neck of the woods, it is your job as an activist who knows the truth to tell the world around you how ignorant these policies are and how important it is to reinstate this plant back into the farmer's crops. I'm telling you people, I cannot believe the amount of ignorance still running rampant in the world today now that we have a Google search. I got friends who have children who are like seven and eight years old they walk over to their computer and they do a google search on marijuana they do a google search on the word hemp they do a google search on the word uh, on the on the phrase uh, cannabis sativa they do a google search on prohibition failed policies and those seven and eight years uh, year old kids are now more sp more smart, more informed, and more clever than the clowns who are running for office in this country and in the country of Canada. Kananda has to got to turn things around. I can't believe the ass clowns that got voted in this time. Kelly is right. ABC, anything but conservative. So, look... <laughs> If you want the world to be a better place, you got to start with your voice and your community, and you got to end it with your vote in the voting booth. With that said, I'm done and off on my ramble. We have, as my joint host today, Kelly Kristen from KDK Distributors, and as our joint guest, David Shay. Kelly, before we rattle on to the next couple of topics, I think it's important that people in the medical marijuana movement be aware of the nice thing you do for patients who cannot afford good quality vaporization. You betcha. We've been, uh, it's, a, it's a program. It's 100% free. We all know how we like free and the reason why it's free. Um, it's intended to go uh, uh, to patients, uh, cannabis patients anywhere in the world who are on uh, assisted income, disability pension, welfare, whatever the case may be and simply cannot afford a vaporizer and they use cannabis to medicate uh, uh, for their particular ailments maybe they never smoked in their lives uh, either tobacco cannabis or anything and of course uh, 
you know, maybe consuming cannabis is not their favorite, uh, combusting it is not their favorite thing to do, but uh, they'd love to have a vaporizer, yet they can't afford one. These are the uh, cannabis patients we are in search of, wherever they may be in the world, um, who could benefit from a quality vaporizer, not only uh, for the health benefits, the elimination of all the um, carcinogens created by combustion, um, that type of stuff, and also they're much more efficient. They use a lot less cannabis uh, because it's more efficient method of, of uh, consuming cannabis. So it's a financial plus for them as well, and and uh, so it's it's just like a, a great great thing for these people, and um, uh, well, it is for everybody, and for those who can't afford it and would like to have one, it's pretty simple. Send me an email to Kelly K E L L Y at K D K Wholesale dot C A, and uh, we put your name in, and of course uh, some. Uh, uh, we give them away on a regular basis, and uh, yeah, it can be anywhere in the world. So if you're listening, please send me an email. And if you're not uh, one of these patients who can't afford one, you probably know someone who is. So please let them know about the program because we certainly uh, enjoy giving them away. And again, on behalf of the movement, that is such a gracious thing. Thank you to you and your kind staff who work so diligently to make that happen, that rocks. Yeah, you're very welcome. Like you say, it feels it feels good, right? We, we, uh, we enjoy it. Well, David, I know that uh, talking over the break, you talked about having to slow down as an activist. And that's something I'm going to have to learn to do. I turned 59 last week on Friday, which, by the way, on the homepage of the timeforhemp.com website, you can listen to the Celeb Stoner Hour. We had Willie Nelson on as a guest on the Celeb Stoner Hour last Friday. And uh, Steve Bloom, host of that show, asked Willie if he would sing the Happy Birthday song to yours truly. <laughs> and he did. So you can listen to that. I was kind of rocked to have Willie Nelson sing Happy Birthday to me. But uh, I've had my doctor also tell me that i got to slow down. Heart problems run in my family, and they're popping up inside me. And my doctor has told me I need to get away from stress and take it easy, or I'm going to die early. So I've got my will made because I can't get away from stress. I'm living here in a world, baby. But, David, you said that you've had to slow down and back away from being as active as you'd like, and it's got to be frustrating. How do you deal with that? Well, it's it's like you said, it's frustrating. I I didn't know how to do it at first. I was still, and this is the reason why I want to talk about it is for other activists out there who are kind of going through the same thing as I did. There's a certain point in time you have to realize that you're medically retired now. So you know, I would go into mum meetings, and there'd be a new committee struck up, and of course, you know, they'd want somebody to run the committee. And being someone who was active all their life and healthy all their life, you know, I was always one to put my hand up, volunteer for stuff, why not? But I found, and this is, again, what I think is important for other activists who are going through the same thing, just because other people aren't volunteering for stuff and you've always been active doesn't mean that you have to step in anymore because if you're, you know, going to volunteer for stuff, but then you can't do it anyway because you're too sick to do it, then you, nobody benefits regardless. So, you know, take the time to relax. If you're a relaxed person like myself, I, I'm learning how to do it, you end up actually doing more. And it's got to do with the fact that, you know, you're not overwhelmed. You don't have 50 or 60 things on your plate, and, you know, you forget about all of them because you just can't deal with any of it. And, you know, that's my personal experience. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but I imagine it's the same. So, yeah, you activists out there that are overwhelmed, get out and relax. You're, you're retired. You know, still tell your family, you know, fight for medical marijuana patients, tell your friends, you know, uh, but you don't have to, uh, you know, set up a licensed commercial production site. You don't have to, you know, spend all of your time working at the computer hunched over in a bad posture position all day. So, t 
take a break, relax, and chill. And Kelly, I know. Load up the bowl and chill. <laughs> yeah. Kelly, That's I know right. You, you had a couple more questions for David. I'll pass it to you. Um, no, I didn't. Oh. I, 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 I <laughs> we were going to, uh, um. You were talking about the political scene up there during the, during the break. Oh, the breakdown of the, you know, beautiful NDP folks, which, uh, obviously made a big difference in the last election because, uh, um, yeah, you guys, uh, never done so well. Yeah, actually, now I think about it, and again, and, this and, and you know, and and the NDP is a uh, um, um, four twenty friendly political party. Well, I got to say, uh, first of all, I made a mistake. It is is the liberals that are in a majority there now. Oh, okay, uh, okay. And and to say that NDP are pot friendly, that's a mistake too. Or at least here provincially, they were uh, they were not pot friendly. Uh, the liberals. Who are in now? They might be better. Uh, they only were just elected uh, just last September or, or something along that lines. Right. Well, what did they say when Justin Trudeau came out and said that he would uh, um, legalize cannabis if elected? Ironically, the uh, the provincial parties here separate themselves from federal parties. So, if you ask them a question about what they think, uh, like if you ask the liberal M MLAs here what they think about Justin Trudeau's policy on marijuana, uh, they say, well, we're not part of the federal liberal party, and, you know, we don't really have a stance on it. It's a federal law, so we're not going to really talk about it. Gotcha. So that's a little disappointing. What was that? Yeah, so that's, Kelly. that's disappointing. But, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry. A little uh, interruption there. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I, I guess, so you're saying really that they're not, they're, they're, they're avoided and trying to deal with it in their area by saying it's a federal thing and, you know, but, I mean, they have a vote if, if <clears throat> you know, if the Liberals were to attain a uh, majority government, of course, they would need all their um, party members to vote pro-cannabis in order for it to happen. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's, that's good for the federal side of things, again. But, like I say, the, the provincial parties here, they just totally ignore any uh, link to the federal parties and what they're doing. Now, I, that isn't to say that they don't have responsibility. Like, for example, uh, it, should there be marijuana in hospitals? Hospitals is a provincial jurisdiction. So, you know, they realistically have a responsibility in that, in that situation. They just completely ignore it. Right. So, right. Uh, you so know, it's something it, that's not on the table, tried to be pushed under the rug or put on the back burner or... Uh, yeah, and you know, not really dealt with in any manner, just not dealing with it, so to speak. Yeah, well, I, I do have to say, any time you talk to a, a health critic, they'll uh, agree with you a hundred percent. So it's it's like the uh, when the NDPs were in, I spoke to the liberal health or critic about uh, a vaporizer in hospital, and you know she's all for it, but now the liberals are in and. Again, like I say, now you talk to them about it, and all of a sudden, uh, well, that's federal law, so that's got nothing to do with us. Right, right, right. Well, I know uh, if you guys are looking for firepower, certainly look uh, look to Israel. Um, they've had a program where they've been um, vaporizing in hospitals for quite some time now, and I think that they're, you know, gathering tons of, of um, of awesome uh, medical um, information on vaporization and uh, who it's affecting, how it's affecting them, uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a great program. Certainly, uh, um, see what you can find out. I don't know if you Google it or whatever. What what kind of information comes up? But they're doing really really outstanding things in Israel and uh, uh, a place to look for for. Uh, 
guidance, no doubt, and uh, information. Right. And I think, too, an important thing to know about all of this is, you know, we talk about medical marijuana, and it's kind of specific, but it really falls under a broader category, and that's alternative medicine. Like, if I wanted to have medical marijuana covered under provincial health insurance, the only way I can get anything covered under provincial health uh, pharmacare is, you know, the, the name implies it all. It's, it's a pharmacare program. There is no, uh, it doesn't matter if marijuana saves the province millions of dollars. It's not a prescription drug, so it doesn't qualify under the provincial pharmacare pro program. So, you know, it, again, this is where, uh, <clears throat> just like the vaporization issue, that's, that's an access issue, just like a wheelchair ramp is. But, again, the politicians that are in power in the moment, they're doing a real good job at just pretending it all has to do with the federal government, which is sad, really. And, uh, you know, all we can do, really, is get out and keep talking to our politicians and you know, uh, there is a lot of people here that support medical marijuana, and I'm not saying, again, that all MLAs are the same here. There are MLAs here that support, you know, medical marijuana issues. I just think that, uh, you know, one of the things that we can do as a group is, you know, band together with other alternative medicine groups. Well, one thing I got to band together with is my sponsors and let them know how much I appreciate them being a sponsor here in the big broadcast. Please do make it a point to go to our website, click on the banners of those who support us. That way they know that their advertising dollars are well spent. Also, this network is like a good joint. Best when you share it with your friends. So please do that. Let everybody know that not only do you get your news and music from the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network, you think that the world around you should also as well. We'll be right back here at Time for Hemp. Listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. If you are in the Portland, Oregon area and are an OMMP cardholder, then come down to Nikki's Diggity Dank Market, Portland, Oregon's first and only weekly OMMP market, presented by the Alternative Wellness Center, located at 5241 Southeast 72nd Avenue, two blocks south of Foster Boulevard, close to public transportation, held every Sunday, 10 a.m. till 7 p.m., connecting quality vendors with patients. Nikki's Diggity Dank Market also has a weekly raffle with products from every vendor so come down to Nikki's Diggity Dank Market and have fun while connecting with quality vendors and getting great natural medicine if you are a vendor and want a chance to connect with OMMP patients you can check out their Facebook page at facebook.com slash alternative wellness center or call 971-888-4392 be sure to register early because space is limited Nikki's Diggity Dank Market In need of a ganja vacation? Blaze away. Don't criticize me. Hotbox Jamaica. Chill. Relax and burn all day while watching the amazing ocean view. Listen to the birds. Bathe in the mineral waters of the Ganja River. Munch on tasty Jamaican Rasta food. Take a weed farm tour and hold a meditation. Book this amazing vacation for $420. Get the Sativa Special. Seven nights in sativa dorms with ganja meals and airport transfer. 
check us out at hotboxjamaica.com. That's hotboxjamaica.com. Hotbox Jamaica, a higher meditation vacation. Indigo is your source for affordable induction grow lighting. First discovered in 1891 by Nikola Tesla, Indigo lights deliver 11 years of electronic sunlight to your plants. Indigo lamps require less than half the power of traditional HID lamps. Converting to Indigo lights means you'll cut down on your power bill with less lighting. Indigo lamps also use five times less mercury than traditional fluorescent or HID lamps, making Indigo not only energy efficient but environmentally friendly as well. No more switching out lamps between vegetative and flowering stages. As nature intended, your lights get a steady dose of UV light that makes your plants grow healthier and stronger. Indigo products are manufactured in San Diego, California and come with a written 10 year warranty. What Tesla knew, then growers know now, is that Indigo lighting is the cost effective addition to your victory garden. To learn more or order now, go to inda grow.com. That's I N D A G R O.com or call 877 452 2244 to answer any of your questions. These guys really know lights. Indigo really is your sunlight in a box. Free? Did you say free? Free hemp? Free hemp? Free hemp video and audio? Free downloads of all the top artists, all the pot artists on planet Earth. Interviews with all the people making the movement, making the hemp movement. It's time for hemp. That's right, world. It's time for hemp. That's right, world. It's time for him. Well, now, chocolate cake makes my poor stomach ache. And all those pills are too much for me to take. I don't like cocaine because it makes me all uptight. But coffee and Reefer makes me feel all right. Crystal methyl making you high. Yeah, coffee and reefer does make me feel all right. And I want to thank you for tuning in to the big broadcast. You are listening to Time for Hemp live all around the world. After this broadcast, Steve Danks comes to you out of England. And then after that particular broadcast on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have Mike Bafari and Morgie Anasativa. Coming to you from Chile and Argentina. And that's followed with some groovy tunes for a couple of hours from TJ the DJ. Rocking your socks off with some of the best marijuana music this side of heaven. And then the evening is full of all kinds of great entertainment here at TimeForHemp.com. Heard on Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, and of course, iHeartRadio. We are celebrating the hardworking activists up in Canada. It is Tuesday, Canada Day. Joint host, KDK distributor, Kelly Kristen, and our joint guest, hardworking activist straight out of Nova Scotia, David Shea. Gentlemen, I'll let you wrap up this last segment of our joint conversation. All right. <laughs> well, uh, oh, I know. I'm. I'm. You know what? I'm off the ball today. I'm telling you, it's like the third time. I'm sort of like here, stupefied. I guess I'm having a uh, a rough show. I haven't had one of these for a while. Usually, it's uh, usually it's pretty easy going. I don't know. Today, I'm uh, I'm a little slow for some reason. I don't know. Maybe my mind is elsewhere or something. But um, anyhow, my apologies. But uh, David, it's, uh, it's sort of nice to learn about what's going on out there. Um, I know that you say you're not involved in in activism all that much anymore. Uh, but uh, um, nice to, you know, there's maybe as much as you'd like to be. Um, it's nice to have a pulse on what's going on, um, and I. You know, I'm just I'm just out there promoting my ABC vote philosophy. Please vote anything but conservative, and uh, you know, hope that I can uh, um, get that message across to everybody. As the liberals in next year, who knows? Well, well, we can we can only hope. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. Of course, that would be uh, that would be my ideal situation. Um, 
but we need help, of course, from everybody across the across the land. Um, I'm I'm very hopeful. Or I I I believe, Mr. Trudeau. Again, I always say to people, you know, of course, they have to be elected first, and then they have to do what they say they're going to do. And right. let's face it, we've all run across many politicians who just don't do that. And, um, of course, you know, uh, just because Mr. Trudeau is in favor of it, maybe not everybody in the party will be either. So it's right. important to, if they get a majority government, to have everybody on board. Um, hopefully there's not much resistance, and it does actually happen. That would be a blessing um, for so many medical patients and uh, just for the general public, the recreational users of our land who, um, who don't need to be prosecuted for something so ridiculous as a little bit of cannabis. And uh, we can just move forward as, uh, as we should as a responsible, respectable society uh, that includes cannabis consumption. Right, and you're, you just said uh, a thing that we were talking about during the break that leads perfectly into this responsible, respectful society. Um, and in regards to MPs, and this is what we were talking about during the break, if you're a patient or you know just someone who supports marijuana and uh, you go to your MP, you should speak to them in a responsible, respectful way. I know that uh, my MP personally... He's had a lot of bad experience with people coming into his office and, you know, shouting and screaming at him or giving him 100-page documents. I, I know that, you know, they're supposed to keep their pulse on things too, but he, MPs can't keep up with that kind of information or that kind of abuse. You really have to have respect for them and a decent conversation. You don't have to tell them every single thing that's wrong in the world uh, or be pissed off at them because, you know, they aren't fixing the problem. They might be just as powerless as you are when it comes to a lot of the decisions made in Parliament. So when you go to your MP or your provincial representative, keep in mind that they're a person and, you know, they, they don't see what's going on in, in the world like you do, but you don't have to show them everything. You don't have to, uh, you know, yell at them or anything like that. Just have a decent conversation, five or six topics, and uh, that'll go a lot farther than, like I said, books worth of information. They're just not going to read it. They're not going to deal with you. They're, they're going to get sick of people who start talking about marijuana. So that's how I feel about that. Yeah, I uh, obviously when you approach, you know, it's all in the approach and, and how you approach someone, how much they're willing to listen and are to help you. Um, if you confuse them or intimidate them or overwhelm them, um, it's difficult to get support for sure, for sure. <laughs> right, and I know that there are some MPs out there too who just, even the mention of the word marijuana, they're going to, you know, turn their turn their lights off in their head, they're not going to listen to you or, or whatever, but again, you <laughs> know. Well, everybody's you know. In, in, entitled to their opinion and their thoughts, and yeah, not everybody is in the country is pro-cannabis or uh, medicinal and or recreational. Right, um, and that's an important issues like this in a real true democracy, I think it's pretty simple, we just vote on it, man. Don't let the politicians decide for us, how about let us okay. decide for ourselves. Maybe we could start having. I know what a concept. Sorry, sorry to throw that out there. <laughs> no, I'm, I I really am a big believer in smaller government, like uh, what Dana Larson was doing with the referendums. I think that's a great idea. I'm I'm not saying it's an easy process, but if you bring it down to the provincial level, uh, depending on what province you live in, too, obviously. But you, I I think that we, as society, really need to focus on things locally. Uh, almost more so than on a federal or higher level. I mean, none of us, I don't think very many of us at all are speaking about marijuana prohibition on an international level. How many people here, like, have written the UN and said, hey, why don't you look at the narcotic uh, 
Control Act or whatever it was, written back in 1970, whenever, and think about marijuana and its place in the role of that act today. Is it reasonable anymore? Um, again, though, you know, I think on the local level, it's more reasonable to deal with because, you know, who who among us are going to write the UN? It's. I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I'm just saying that there's. It's so far away. It's so. So. I don't know. You know. Well, that that comes. That naturally comes if you start at the at the base root level, like you say, locally, and then it gets done locally, and then it gets done civically, and then it gets done provincially, and then it gets done federally, and then it gets to places like the UN. Right. Or. Um, I think that uh, I'd like to talk about now. I, I don't know how much time we got left, but uh, Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana, they have a cannabis day, and that's happening July 1st. It's going to be 1 to 5. So we're going to have speakers and music. There's going to be free stuff. DJ Wolf will be there. There's going to be canteen, vendors, open mic for musicians. And if you want to know, you know, more stuff about it, you can contact chair at mum.ca. And, you know, I've been to it every year for the last three or four years that I've been here in Nova Scotia. And like I said, the, there's no police presence or barely any, you know, you might see a police officer or two. Where is it, David? Where, where in Nova Scotia? What town? And, and uh, is it like at City Hall? or? It's going to be in uh, Victoria Park in Halifax. Nice. Yeah. And you, you've, this is where you've rented in the past, so it's always in the same location? Uh, no, one, it's been, uh, it was in Dartmouth last couple of years. Um, I'm not sure uh, why they made the change. I know that, uh, you know, in, in the past, it's been a great place, and I can't remember the name of the other location, but, you know, it's, uh, it, I think that a lot of the members wanted it to be in Victoria Park because it's downtown. <coughs> so, uh, like in in downtown Halifax, in in the main part of the city, it right. just seemed that the members wanted to have it there more. So, uh, we're changing location. Victoria Park is where it's going to be. There you go. Do you get a good turnout? Oh well, I can't say that we get a good turnout as uh, you know some of the other provinces like you guys. Uh, I do have to say there's usually about a hundred people there or more. And it is That's nice. You probably do better than Calgary. We're uh, <laughs> we're rough out here for that kind of stuff. Um, I think that's another reason why they might want to have it at Victoria Park because you know it, it is in a more uh, accepting place. You know, it's uh, it's downtown. It's central downtown, kind of really, right? So the people there are going to be more accepting of marijuana patients or, you know, recreational users, and it is an event for, you know, everybody. It's not just for medical cannabis patients. Right, for all ages. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it is time to wrap it up and let the world know how important it is to end prohibition. Kelly, I appreciate you. Want to give a shout out to your organization one more time? You bet. Uh, free vaporizers for med patients. Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at kdkwholesale.ca. Hope to hear from you soon. And how about you there in Nova Scotia? You want to give a shout-out? I'm just going to give a shout-out to Lisa Mamakine Curtis. Uh, you know, she's trying to get vaporizers in hospitals. I know that you guys have spoken to her and stuff. Uh, good for her. All righty, and coming up next, we got Steve Danks coming out of England, and we want to let the whole world know how important it is all around the world to take time for hemp. Look at all that money, yeah, the money that they spend. Take another look and spend some time for him. Don't cut trees for paper cards. Yes, it's time for him. 